What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Clark Tank. I do want to talk about an RPG of sorts, Script of the Necrodancer Amplified, which we launched like two weeks ago-ish. Our DLC did better than I expected, and I think that's partly just because it's hard to have any expectations at all about what a DLC is going to do because there is no, on, on Steam Spy, uh, there's no way to see DLC results. And so you actually have to go on Steam and use the old box later method. So you look at the number of reviews on, uh, on that DLC itself and multiply by about 50 to get a very rough estimate for the number of units sold. But, but yeah, in general, there's not a lot of data out there on, <clears throat> on attach rate and things like that. The, the number of people who already owned your game what percentage of them are going to pick up your DLC? Because if you knew that, if you had like some ballpark figures, then you'd better be better able to estimate whether it would be worth your time uh, to make DLC for your game, right? Uh, and yeah, I didn't have those figures, and I think I underestimated a little bit what the attach rate was going to be. So uh, yeah, of course, we're not supposed to give out sales figures directly from Steam, but I can give you a rough idea of our attach rate since that's not the direct sales figures. And for Necrodancer uh, Amplified, it's about 6% so far. Um, and, you know, we just launched it two weeks ago, although it has been out in early access since January. But I expect lifetime that is going to continue to creep up and maybe we will hit like 10% or something like that. But uh, yeah, I was expecting more like five lifetime percent. So yeah, this is this is better than expected. And 5%, even at 5%, since Necrodancer has sold so many copies, uh, I figured, you know, that was going to be worth it. Um, but obviously doing a bit better than that, which is great. But if your game has not sold as much as Necrodancer, then maybe 5% isn't worth it, right? So if you can if you can get a rough estimate for what is a reasonable attach rate, um, then you can make much better decisions. So maybe 10% is somewhat uh, reasonable. However, I do think that well-known games are going to have a higher attach rate because uh, we got featured on the front page, we had a daily deal and stuff like that when, when Amplified came out, uh, and that certainly helped to you know spread awareness of of the DLC, and so if your game is not selling well enough to to justify you know getting daily deal slots and things like that, it's going to be harder. So, so yeah, I think <clears throat> maybe ten percent might be on the high side. Maybe not. I would love to hear if any indies have higher you know lifetime attach rate figures than that. Uh, but it seems like five percent was was a bit low. But anyway, just giving that information so that you guys can make better decisions about about your own games. Matt from SomaSim saying, I think High Rares was about 7% for the first DLC. Just released another recently. Okay, yeah, 7%. So Necrodancer is at 6, but I expect it to climb a bit. So that's the same sort of ballpark. Uh, but that is good to know. Thank you very much for sharing that, Matt. So yeah, that's the kind of ballpark that we're, we're in, it seems, guys. Uh, maybe between 5 and 10%. And oh, you launched it in April. So yeah, maybe it's going to be closer to 10, you know, by the time, uh, you know, we get a few years out. So yeah, that's good to know. Red Hook Tyler is saying Crimson Court has attached 15% on Steam so far. Holy smokes, congrats Tyler, that is huge. And that's, yeah, launching relatively recently, so hopefully you guys will get up over 20%. <clears throat> but yeah, that is that is valuable information, thank you so much Tyler, and that, yeah, just kind of broadens the the range for us. If, you're, if your game is a mega hit like, like uh, Darkest Dungeon, then maybe you can get into the 15-20% range, but, but yeah, I do think that that's... <clears throat> That's pretty high, would be unwise to estimate that much for most games, but that's cool to know how high that it can go. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, all right, let's move on. I said I wanted to talk about Scanner Somber, which is Interversion's latest game. They basically say that it has bombed. Um, and in their video, they're saying, you know, it's, it's a bit surprising uh, because they made Prison Architect, which was a giant hit, one of the biggest, you know, most successful indie games of all time. Uh, and they're saying, you know, I just thought there was a minimum number of people floating around on Steam, and if you did a reasonably good job on a game, you are going to get a reasonably big audience to it. Um, but yeah, I think this is, this is very good information and, you know, sobering information for those of us who have had hit indie games. You cannot just assume that your audience is going to come along with you, uh, especially if you change genres like Scanner Somber. Let's watch the, let's watch the trailer for it. This is not the same genre as Prison Architect, you may notice. What even genre is it, you may be asking. 
It looks nice, it looks innovative for sure. But what is gameplay? Is what I wonder after this. Uh, but yeah, I think it just shows that you do you do need to pay attention to market analysis, uh, even if you have had massive success. So yeah, just wanted to talk about that briefly as a cautionary tale for, for everyone. But yeah, we also want to talk about Dream Daddy, which was a massive hit that came out during our during the last four weeks. So let's check out the trailer for this. <laughs> so this game obviously is hooky in that uh, it is pretty bizarre. You get to design your own dad and then try to date other dads. The graphics and stuff are, are pretty good. It looks pretty polished. If you can create a hooky visual novel, there are a lot of visual novels on Steam, but there obviously is also a large base of visual novel fans. Uh, so if you're comfortable with the massive amount of competition and you think that your game is really going to stand out, uh, you can succeed in a big way with visual novels, like How to Fool Boyfriend. However, I do think that it's uh, risky to draw any kind of conclusions from Dream Daddy because uh, it was created by the people from Game Grumps who have massive numbers of followers on YouTube. So, you know, when you get a YouTube video from them on your game, it's going to generate a spike and <laughs> how much more so when it's their own game, you know, their, their fans care about the things that they make um, much more than random other developers. So. So yeah, I think it's it's hard to separate this hooky visual novel from all that promotion. Um, so you know we're going to see this in the charts, and it may be in the charts for a while. But I think unfortunately there's there's not a ton that we can learn from it because it's skewed by you know that extra uh, press that they're getting, well that extra attention they're getting because they have their own channel. So yeah, interesting, but I don't think we can draw too many conclusions from that. But there are other ones that we can draw conclusions from, such as Pyre. So Pyre is, uh, now is it actually uh, developed and published by Supergiant, the makers of From many awesome games, Bastion and Transistor. such as Bastion and Transistor, super high quality games. You tally, Bappy. Now, what do you guys think of this trailer? First off, it's pretty long. These character portraits and stuff are great, the audio is great as usual, all Supergiant games have Amazing audio. The trailer makes it look awesome, but no clue what it's about. Exactly, Lars. I'm watching this, and I'm like, how even do you gameplay? I'm confused by what's going on, because the gameplay does not look like any other game, as far as I can tell. And then they, and then they add things like this Who Goes Free stuff, just to make me totally question what the heck is going on. Uh... But yeah, it's uh, it's selling well. It's in the charts and stuff. Obviously, people give it a lot of benefit of the doubt because it's by Supergiant. Like, I would buy it just because it's Supergiant and it looks gorgeous, and I want to figure out what the heck is going on in there. Uh, Simbi, you're saying that it's very niche, lots of text, a visual novel, huh? Gameplay is basically slow basketball. Slow basketball? So yeah, the, this stuff that they show here, like, yeah, this. So it looks kind of like you got your squad over here, they got their squad over there, but you walk around in this arena type thing. The game's confusing anyway because it doesn't fit in any genre, which might be hard to convey in the trailer. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, if it's if it's like new kind of gameplay, then how do you trailer that? Uh, all right, there's, so there's been other games, lots of games came, coming out in the last four weeks that were noteworthy. So this is uh, The End is Nigh uh, by our friend Tyler Glyle and uh, and Edmund McMillan, so who who made, um, well, tons of games, Super Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac and things. So this one looks more like Binding of Isaac kind of visuals, but maybe Super Meat Boy-ish gameplay. This is so funny. Making fun of streamers and YouTubers. So good. Now we get gameplay, but, you know, usually that sort of thing where it's like no gameplay for ages is... A bad idea, but in that case, when I first saw that, it totally hooked me and made me laugh, got me in a good mood. Uh, you know, ready to give the game the benefit of the doubt for sure, just because of the, the clever humor. But yeah, this seems Meat Boy-ish, but uh, with a few unique mechanics. So yeah, I haven't checked it out. I was considering playing this this week as well. Uh, came out on the 12th, uh, 660 user reviews. Yeah, we should check on Steam Spy what that amounts to. 93% positive is pretty good. 
And basically anything that Edmund McMillan makes, he has an audience as well. Uh, and this is this the, the sort of art style that they're into. And this gameplay is kind of Meat Boy-ish gameplay. So you'd expect that, again, this is a known developer would be able to bring uh, his audience with him. And yeah, 30,000 units sold. So uh, that's maybe like 450K or so in the first couple of weeks, which is, which is pretty good. It's going to go on to make, you know, in the millions of dollars for sure. But it's a bit less than I expected, actually. So yeah, again, I suppose reinforcing the fact that just because you have massive hits doesn't doesn't mean much these days necessarily. Although I wonder how much these devs try to engage their audience and you know their community and and keep them uh, keep them close, keep them around, keep them engaged. Because if you don't, if you just kind of let if you ignore the the you know your fan base and you don't have have them on you know following you on Twitter and. Uh, you know, a lot of their discussions taking place on your forums or your Steam forums and things like that, then it's going to be a lot harder to to get the message out to them about your new games, right? So I do think that, you know, managing your community well and treating your, your fans well can help you bring them along to, to your future games. All right, so yeah, that was another noteworthy game that came out recently. And then, well, Aven Colony, let's watch the trailer for Kingdoms and Castles, which we're going to be playing in just a little while. Let's watch this trailer first. Now, this game was launched on Fig, which is interesting. Now the graphics are, are great, but they're kind of cute. Not super cute, but a bit cutesy, which I think uh, usually is not what the Steam audience is, is after. It's not super cute. I think that there are games like Besieged, uh, where the graphics are kind of cutesy, but not in a more serious kind of way. Maybe the color palette is different. Uh, there's a bit of blood and stuff like that in, in BCG. Even though it's not super serious, it's still a bit darker and less cutesy than this sort of look. Yeah, it is blocky, that's true. It's it's just low poly. Some parts of it look vaguely voxely, but it's uh, yeah, it's just a, a nice cohesive low poly style. The base price is very low for this game. Yeah, that's a good point. It's $9.99, which is a bit unusual. And so, yeah, it's good to see that a game like this um, doing so well in the charts. And I've heard from people that uh, that the gameplay of this is is fun, but not not a ton of depth. Like maybe after five, six hours or something like that, you're, you're kind of satisfied. Um, and so, yeah, if that is the case, and yet it's still selling this well, uh, and there's another data point here that we should check out, Avon Colony, which is another sort of sim strategy game that came out recently, and despite its mixed reviews, uh, has done reasonably well, was in the charts too. Let's watch the trailer for this. Looks like a colony building game. It's got nice graphics. What engine do you think? Doesn't say. Maybe it's a custom engine. And yeah, published by Team 17, which is interesting. So yeah, despite this game having mixed reviews, it was in the it was in the charts for quite a while as well. So, and you know that that trailer looked looked nice, looked pretty. Uh, didn't show a ton of a ton of gameplay. I wasn't super hyped after watching that. Although I will check it out. All right, let's get to our homework so that we can uh, play some Kingdom and Castles. I'm super super curious to see how that one plays. Uh, but first, let's check out the Steam Top 50. So, Player Unknown's Battleground still parked at number one. Not even a jitter. It's just <laughs> solidly number one. And Dota 2, CSGO is usually around the, the top. Now, Citadel Forged with Fire, what are you? You came out two days ago. So yeah, this game, <laughs> this trailer starts out with your hands burning. You're like burning alive. Kind of gets your attention. Hogwarts Simulator? Yeah, it's kind of the feeling that I got. Like you're at a wizard academy, yeah, flying around on brooms. Reminds me a bit of... Uh, arc just how cool it was to think that you could ride on dinosaurs and stuff like that but you can ride on bears and fly around on brooms uh so yeah single player multiplayer online multiplayer and has you know for a game like this it's usually tough to get decent reviews so at least it's not mixed so that is a, a new contender citadel forged with fire I expect that we will see it hang around for quite a while as long as it doesn't have you know major technical issues and as long as the devs are actually active and updating it and stuff like that, I think that this type of game could do 
could do quite well for for a long time. We'll see if it uh, if it hangs around in the charts. And now another one, Foxhole came out yesterday. So much good stuff coming out these days. Massively multiplayer game where you work with hundreds of players to shape the outcome of a persistent online war. But yeah, I think this, you know, scratches an itch. Uh, there isn't a game quite like this. Another niche. I'm not sure if this one's going to persist for uh, quite as long, but, you know, it it may. It may. Not too surprised to see, you know, military-style games are popular. Online military-style games with a somewhat unique uh, gameplay style. You know, quite viable. <clears throat> Probably difficult to make, though, this type of, of massively online game. All right, Rocket League this is just always hanging around. Civ 6 is up here because it's on sale. Warframe is usually around, and I think it's been moving up the charts, Warframe. It's a free-to-play game. Now, Just Cause... All this Just Cause stuff is going to be in the charts because it was just on sale. So we'll see quite a bit of it, I think. Uh, Dark and Light, you just came out a week ago. What the heck are you? Nice looking visuals. Looks uh, kind of like that... Uh, other game we were just watching that I can't remember the name of now, even though I just watched it. Except a little less Harry Potter-ish. Too many Arc-like games? Yeah, well, I suppose it's the, the time for Arc-like games now, because Arc came out however many years ago, and if people saw that and started trying to make Arc-like games, then now's the time they're all going to be coming out. Hey, they all look like Skyrim. Yeah, that's true. Made by the company that now owns the Arc devs. Ah, okay. Uh, Black Desert Online has been been hanging around since the last few Clark Tanks. King of the Kill is always somewhere. It's moved down a bit since we last uh, saw. So yeah, Dream Daddy, <clears throat> despite coming out over a week ago, is still sitting pretty high in the charts. Yeah, Simbi, what is with these game trailers running at 20 FPS? Yeah, I I noticed that too. I always complain about it, but I thought I would let it let it go this time. But I shouldn't let it go. Yeah, like if, if you can't run your own game on some massive rig. At 30 or 60 FPS, like why are they? Why are your games stuttering? That would give me great concern as a buyer if the gameplay is stuttering in your trailer. That's that's frightening for sure. <clears throat> All right, here's GTA. It's always got to be in the charts somewhere. Total War Warhammer 2. So this is coming out in September. Wow, it's it's this high in the charts even though it's uh, not coming out for two months yet. That's pretty impressive. And there's Kingdoms and, and Castles. Which, again, I'm, I'm pretty astonished by how well this is doing. So that's why we had to play it today. Because it, it looks from that trailer, it looks fun, but simple. And I didn't expect that a simple strategy game would have this much staying power. But, uh, but it has, which is, which is great news for fans of, the, of devs who are making games in that genre. Uh, now, Fate Extella, let's check this out, came out a couple days ago. So yeah, this looks like... Uh, a giant 3D beat em up. This game has a uh, a big following in, among anime nerds, or at least this this uh, IP does. But yeah, the gameplay didn't look super stellar to me. It looked, you know, I guess, if you're into 3D beat em ups, but I've never really been hooked by those types of games. So TF2 is usually around here. Now, another new game, Next Day Survival. What are you? So yeah, this game is like a post apocalyptic survival game. Oh man, is that nuclear stuff? in Eastern Europe somewhere. Another long trailer. What's with, with the long trailers today? So, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it looks okay. I'm not seeing anything that makes it stand out too much. Multiplayer survival game with elements of RPG in an imaginary country in Eastern Europe. You know, there have been similar games to this, but again, I've said a number of times, I do think the survival genre is massive and very viable, so perhaps you don't even need to innovate. All right, The Surge. This came out in May, yeah, and it's back in the charts because it's on sale. Rainbow Six Siege is perennial, and Pyre, here it is. So, this came out just three days ago, and, and even though I haven't been, I haven't done a Clark Tank in a while, I have been paying attention, and when it came out, I think it got up to number two behind uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and it's dropped off pretty fast. So I wonder if that's an indication that, you know, there were Supergiant fans who, you know, are going to buy whatever Supergiant makes, uh, and they got, you know, uh, some press hype and things like that, and people bought it on day one, and that fired it up the charts, but it may not have the kind of stats to give it the staying power on Steam, because these days you need 
you need people to be you know you need to have high uh retention and like player numbers and and you know lots of people seeing that little pop-up saying so and so is now playing pyre in order to stay in the charts so actually we should see on steam charts pyre how many people are actually playing this game right now that's yeah, still quite a few that's lots huh so that can't be the problem I wonder what is the problem it has decent reviews yeah i'm i'm shocked that this has dropped off so much because kingdoms and castles came out over a week ago and it's still up higher than it and pyre is from a much more noteworthy dev team pyre had pre-orders going oh did it okay maybe i missed that i wasn't paying that close of attention uh so yeah pre-orders could definitely affect your post-launch sales if, if tons of people bought it in advance yeah that's true Okay, well then that then that is less concerning than than uh, otherwise it would have been. Uh, all right, Paladins, it's been in the charts for a while. I guess it's climbing. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. So this just came out yesterday. Uh, <laughs> pretty low <laughs> reviews, huh? But any new Call of Duty thing is going to be in the charts. War Thunder. These free-to-play games are climbing. Uh, the Naruto game. Oh, it must have been on sale because now it's falling off. Civ Six. Okay, so this is a DLC, so that's why Civ is on sale and is is up so high in the charts. Uh, in fact, I, I'm not su I'm surprised that Civ isn't higher then. It's down to number seven. It's only 33% off, but still, when it came out, it was parked near the top. All right, Civ six, uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. It's been around for a while. Car Mechanic Simulator just came out today. <laughs> how much of a like car enthusiast audience there is on steam because there's things like my summer car that kind of came out of nowhere and did really well why is this audio so weird <laughs> this is bizarre mixed reviews oh 666 reviews even only 43 percent positive build and expand your repair service okay <laughs> all right rust back pretty high in the chart so yeah this could uh be supporting the theory that uh, everything's a little bit higher now because there's a bit of a Steam Summer Sale hangover. RimWorld also and Gary's Mod, these are all higher than they should be. Uh, Elder Scrolls stuff, Friday the 13th slowly falling off. This is Car Mechanic Simulator DLC, so they got Day 1 DLC. Oh, so you can get Dodges and Mazdas. So they have the real cars in there. Huh. And the forest shouldn't be this high. Skyrim, all this stuff is a bit weird. Simple Planes. It's up here because it's on sale. Gigantic Ultimate Pack, okay. Crossout. Free to play game just came out. Alright, let's check this out. This is a free to play car building game? This is like Mad Max. Crossout is stupidly pay to win. And hey, look, it's Ark. There's a bunch of Ark clones and Ark itself. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is up here because it's on sale. Just Cause because there's a bunch of Just Cause stuff. Yeah, look, Doom. Was it on sale? It's dropping off. Now, Sundered. This is what Lars was talking about. Let's check out Sundered. Now, you said that this was from another well-known team, Lars, which I was not aware of that. Thunder Lotus. Wait, are they the ones that made um, uh, Jotun? Yeah. So they, they have the beautiful arts. That is what they have in spades. Whoever is their art director is... Amazingly good at their job. It's gone again and again. Yeah, what is gameplay? It won't let me That's happening a lot today where we're like, wow man, the the art is beautiful. That's ridiculous. The art is amazing, but yeah, gameplay I'm just like I guess it's platformy Action RPG maybe? Well that's a bummer because man it looks gorgeous. 73% positive is not not bad. It's not not the best, but yeah, Metroidvania, I suppose. I would expect to see that higher, you know, based on that amazing art. Look at that, so cool looking. But yeah, if the, if the game feel is not quite there, like I guess this reminds me most of like Hollow Knight with with beautiful beautiful art that really grabs you. But the gameplay uh, and you know the longevity of the gameplay of of Hollow Knight is certainly there. Yeah, so maybe it will climb it could climb okay yeah so so this is its average over the last uh 24 hours but it's actually at number 26 right now so yeah that's not that's not bad 
Hollow Knight sold 300k units in summer sale? Holy smokes. <laughs> that's that's bonkers numbers. Uh, yeah, so 26 is not bad, and hopefully they'll climb, because, yeah, obviously a beautiful game with a ton of work went into it. I want to try that for sure. Ugh, so many games, so many good games these days, guys. All right, Fallout 4. Man, yeah, this shouldn't be this high either. Uh, Shadow Tactics, which we played on the Clark Tank ages ago, up here because it's on sale. Dead by Daylight shouldn't be this high. Northgard, Terraria? What is going on? Yeah, this must just be Steam Sale Hangover still. Warface Icebreaker, Witcher, Seven Days to Die. Just a bunch of like old perennial games. Path of Ex Exile, Tekken, which came out not too long ago. Planet Coaster used to be perennially in the charts. The same with Factorio. Escapists. Oh, two. So this is coming out in August in about a month. So this is pre-orders. It's already in the charts. There's Avon Colony. So it was higher and it's slowly dropping off. Dead by Daylight had a new killer the other night. Oh, okay. But I would be surprised to see it at that chart position based on all the other, you know, games that used to be hanging out in the charts. It used to hang out in the charts as well. Uh, Smite, Stardew, Tekken 7 soon trademark. This is the DLC. It's coming out soon, so you can pre-order this Tekken uh, DLC. Sherlock Holmes is up here because it's on sale. XCOM. Okay, this is a new DLC for XCOM. Squad used to be in the charts for quite a while, somewhat perennial. Uh, Trove. We've seen it pop in once or twice. Machine World. All right, you're new. You just dig whatever you want, man. Yeah. Wow, you actually get to put a house together like that? That's pretty cool. You do stuff on boats, too? You can just do everything in this game. Okay, only 70%. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised not to see this doing better, but I guess, yeah, it just came out. So, predict that game will sell a lot in Germany. Exactly what I was thinking, Strack. Yeah, it seems like a, a German German style game, along with Farming Simulator. Uh, Arma, Nier, all these things are, you know, old top sellers. Titan Quest Anniversary Edition is on sale. Dave Infamy is on sale. Call of Duty, this is a pre-order for Call of Duty World War II. Okay, yeah, a bit of a weird week. All right, Kingsman Castles. I really like these clouds. Such a neat design. Uh, let's go here. I assume we're going to mine this stuff and get it out of the way. All right. Food. Farm. Here, have a neighbor. And another neighbor because that one's uh, barren anyway. Okay, let's save up and make an orchard. Oh, we got enough. Oh, it's bigger. Should make more houses. Oh, and a well. Man, it's people. So demanding. Well, well, well. Yeah, this is a, this game definitely has the hallmarks of a good sim strategy game where there's like a whole bunch of things I want to do and I uh, always feel like there's other tasks that I have queued up in my brain. Whoa, dragon sighted. What? A freaking dragon. This, is, this dragon better leave us alone or we're screwed. Uh, please go away, Mr. Dragon. Perhaps you should build some defenses. So yeah, is that dragon just to freak you out and make you want to build defenses? If so, that's pretty clever. We got a storm going on. Did that actually do anything to us? Terrible plague has swept through the land. Oh no. Oh, fire. No. Put it out quick. Oh no. Those are our expensive houses. Oh crap. So yeah, I think we have a general idea of how that works. It's, it's fun, but yeah, fairly simple. It's still doing well on Steam, and I think that's encouraging for any of us who are considering making sim strategy games. And yeah, I hope the developer considers making more updates and expansions and stuff, because I would enjoy it, especially if there were adversaries that were also building their towns and that I could try to overcome them. Or, like I said, if there was Blockhood style, uh, SimCity style difficulties in building up to a, to a sort of a peak, uh, I would enjoy that as well. Thanks again for coming to hang out, guys. Have a great weekend. This Clark Tank is over. Thanks for watching.